Hi everyone, welcome to our new tool, Handplane Baker. In this video, I'm going to do a quick overview of the interface, and then I'm going to do a run through of a sample bake. So starting off, Handplane Baker is set up with three main interface tabs. There's the Models tab, which is where you set up projections, the Settings screen, where you set uh, program level settings, and the Output tab, where you adjust all your output options. So starting with the Models tab, there are a few things I want to point out. The top, you'll see a text field called projection group. This is nameable. You can make it anything you want. So my first group. And in the projection group is where you add your high and low poly models. So I'll click this plus button. And I will navigate to my high poly models. And I'll add a bunch. And then I'll add a low poly model. And then the way these groups work is that projections only happen between models that are in the same group. So I can make a second projection group. I could name that, and I could put more models in there. And the reason to do this is to prevent models from projecting entry that you don't want. So with this system, you don't need to worry about exploding your meshes uh, to get good results. Also, it's important to note on this screen that you can set both the material ID preset and the ray offset at the projection group level, or you can set it at the per object level. And Handplane will use whatever the most specific version you have selected is. So if you set it in the uh, group level, you can then go in and edit individually per mesh. At the uh, bottom of the screen, you'll see the uh, save and load project functions. So I'm going to load up an existing project for this. And here's my whole bake populated into a whole bunch of projection groups. So before I run through more of this bake, I want to very quickly show you how this model is set up. So in 3ds Max, we can look at the low poly model. And this is how I have it split into different groups. Each of these pieces is set to its own projection group. And again, that's so I can bake them all at once uh, without them projecting onto each other. And that's the complete setup. And then if I jump into ZBrush, we can look at the high poly model. And this model is set up as a test mesh to stress hand plane. So it's super dense. Uh, the exported version is about 20 million triangles. Um, and if I go and hit the explode button, you can see it's made from a whole lot of unique pieces. Okay, so one of the other things you'll see on this page are these material settings. And this is a feature that allows you to output both the standard material ID mask and then also a PSD file loaded with preset layers using base colors. So you can pick materials based on this drop down, And then on the next screen, the settings tab, this is one of the primary uses of this tab is you set up what your material library looks like. So each of these uh, channels are nameable. So this could just as easily be a uh, metalness workflow or whatever other naming convention you wanted. Um, and you just set a color for each. And then additionally on the far right, this little box is how you set the material ID mask color. And again, you just make new materials by clicking the plus button, type a name, set some values. Lastly, the, these material libraries are portable. They can be saved into your project file, but also exported separately as just libraries so that users can share their material libraries with each other. And now back onto the first page. Uh, one other thing I want to go over is how the cages work. So I have a cage loaded for this base group, and the status indicator is red. And it'll still use the cage, but when it's red, it means that the cage isn't an exact match for the low poly model. So what it'll do is instead of using the cage to project point to point, it will just use the cage to limit ray distance. So basically your cage will only control ray distance, but not ray direction. If you load a cage that's a perfect match, you'll get a green indicator and the cage will be used to control direction and distance. So I'm going to jump over to the output window. You can see we have a whole bunch of different output maps. And up top is where you set the destination folder, file naming, and you can control things like resolution and super sampling from here. So to start off, I'm just going to bake an object space normal map. I'm going to turn off super sampling and I'm going to run that out and we're going to load into max. So I'll hit bake. And again, this is a 20 million triangle mesh. It's loading into memory and baking. Okay, so that took 14 seconds. And if I load up 3ds Max, we can take a look at the result. Okay, so here's our object space bake. 
And if I start hiding pieces, you can see that it all baked correctly without bleeding over um, between meshes. So now I'm going to jump back into hand plane, uh, go over a few of the output options, and then I'm going to run a complete set of bakes for this model. So starting off, we have uh, tangent space normals. And if you click settings, you can pick your target tangent space. So for this, I can still run out um, on row four. Uh, object space normals. Ambient occlusion. This is a Raycast style ambient occlusion. So it's quite a bit slower than the other mode of ambient occlusion we have. Um, but it works in all scenarios. So it's a good backup option. Ambient occlusion floaters works with this option. Uh, you can set meshes as floaters and it'll output their AOS separately that you can combine them later. Vertex color outputs the vertex colors of the high poly model. Material PSD outputs a PSD file with all the materials set up. Uh, material ID is just a standard material ID map. Um, we've got a curvature map. And if I load settings on here, um, a couple of the important ones, uh, pixel sample radius. Uh, this controls how sharp the details it grabs are. I usually set it between two and four. And max curvature. Um, this is object scale dependent. So this hand plane model is pretty small. So I have to use a, a large value, 240 here. Uh, you may need to set it as low as 10. So if you see that your output is too high contrast, uh, raise this value. If you see uh, an output that's too low contrast or has no detail in it, lower the value. Uh, volumetric gradient. This is a simple way to translate XYZ coordinates from the high poly model into RGB values. So the result you get is basically a gradient fade in each direction on each channel. Cavity map. This is uh, similar to how the curvature map works. Uh, these pixel sample radius is the main thing you're going to want to control. Height map. Um, this is super simple. Just the scale of how it determines the min, max, black and white values and the offset for that scale. And then lastly, we have texture space AO. Uh, this is a post-process style ambient occlusion system, and it works really well in a lot of situations, but doesn't work well in every situation. But the advantage is that it's very smooth and very fast. So I've got it set up for a 20 pixel radius sample. And the larger you make this number, the slower it goes, but also the larger the radius the shadows you get are. Um, and then I've got the output gamma set at 0.6. If you leave it at one, uh, you're likely to over brighten all of your shadow information and lose a lot of shadow radius. So I'm going to run a material PSD, curvature map, gradient, cavity map, texture space AO, object space normals, and tangent space normals. And I'm going to run them with ADEX super sample and I'll hit bake. And this will probably take about a minute. Um, so I'm going to cut and come back and show the result. So it just finished. If you look at the summary, it says it took 151 seconds. And if we scroll down through the log, we can look at what took how long. So our AO took 40 seconds, cavity map 14, um, the gradient took 13, curvature map 14. So you can see most of these maps are really fast. So here are all of our outputs. And I want to go over a few of them, starting with the material ID map. And if you take a look at this PSD, it contains three layer sets for each channel. Uh, below all that is the regular material ID output. And if we dig into one of those layer sets, you can see that within that there is a layer set for each material. That layer set has a mask and within that layer set is a color. Um, now if we jump into 3ds Max, this is our curvature output. You can see it's very smooth and it was very fast. And if we load up Here's that post-process AO. Again, really smooth, and this only took 40 seconds on a 20 million triangle mesh. So this is just the first alpha of our baker. Uh, we have a lot more we'd like to do with it, and we're also open to feedback, so please send us suggestions.